2 Samuel, the 24th chapter. And we're going to read the first 10 verses. And I am aware there's some pretty tough names in here. <laughs> so get your tongue ready to roll. <laughs> when you have it, say amen. Amen. I'm going to wait a couple of seconds so you can get there. Second Samuel, the 24th chapter. And it says, and again, the angel, anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, go, number, Israel, and Judah. Read. For the king, For the king says to Joab, the captain of the host, which, which was, was with, with him, him. Go, go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of people. And Joab said unto the king, now... The Lord thy God add unto the people how many soever they be, and a hundredfold, and that the eyes of my Lord the King may see it. But why doth my Lord the King delight in this thing? And they passed over Jordan and pitched in Arsur, in the right side of the city that lieth in the midst of the river of Gad, and towards Jazer. Knew that one would get you. <laughs> and it came to pass. It came, and it and came to a strong whole of Tyre and all the cities of the Hivites and the Canaanites and they went out to the south of Judah even to Beersheba. And Joab gave up the sum of the number of the people unto the king and there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men that drew the sword and the men of Judah were 500,000 men and David's heart smote him after he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done and now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant for I have done very foolishly. Again, Father, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy and I ask you, O God, that you would help us have ears to hear and a heart to receive. Lord, would you touch us one more time and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You can clap your hands as you're being seated. And based upon this whole chapter, though I am only reading and starting it with the first 10 verses, I want to talk to you a little bit on the subject, how to overcome failure. Amen. How to overcome Amen. failure. Amen. Now, now, all of us at some juncture, some point in our spiritual walk with the Lord, uh, we're going to experience failure. And uh, though we will not all fail in the same way, uh, we will all have a place and a time where there is something uh, that the Lord uh, has required of us that we have struggled in faith. And because we struggled in faith, we did not meet the mark. It may be a sin of omission, something that he asked us to do and we refused to do it. It may be a sin of commission, you know, a willful decision to engage in some activity or to go to some place and get into something that we should not have gotten into. It could be a sin of the thought. You know, sometimes we are plagued by thoughts and we entertain those thoughts and uh, of course, it could be because of choosing uh, the wrong kinds of relationships, wrong kinds of situations and circumstances. There are many reasons why we fail. Amen. And uh, I am not of the persuasion uh, 
uh, that uh, once you get saved, that your sin nature, the nature that you gained from Adam is completely uh, eradicated. I'm convinced what the Bible says in Romans, the sixth chapter, that you ought to reckon yourself dead, count yourself dead. And, uh, you know, if, if that was the case, then what Paul wrote in Romans, the sixth chapter, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And you know the answer was, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Uh, even after we get saved, we've got to make the conscious decision uh, daily because we have to die daily. Everybody know you got to die daily? Yes. You got to die daily. We have to consciously make the decision to do the right thing. Somebody look at somebody and say, do the right thing. But then there are situations when we don't do the right thing. Yes. Maybe somebody got on our last nerve and bounced on it for a little while. And at, in, in the beginning, we said, thank you, Jesus. You know, and uh, we was doing fine for a little bit, a half a minute. And they continued to ride that nerve until finally something rose up in us that wasn't a thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't a Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we we lost the victory. May, maybe uh, maybe on our cell phone or on our tablet or on our computer, we went past a site. And it was a site. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It was a whole lot to see. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, somehow or another, we kept finding ourselves on that same page. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, uh, and we failed. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, there, there are numerous things that could have happened that could have taken us to failure. Uh, and since all failure is not the same, uh, I don't really have to particularly find uh, your failure because all unrighteousness is sin. Somebody say amen. amen. Sometimes people try to minimize failure. They try to minimize. I, I found out the longer you're in church, the more skillful you become at minimizing failure. Yes. Praise the Lord. When you first come in, uh, if, if, you, if you got a nice soaking of the Holy Ghost, you know, not just a touch, but a soaking. <laughs> You know how it is. Uh, mothers will know what I'm talking about. When you send your son to get in the tub, you got to come in there check. Because <laughs> he might not get in. He might splash around in the water, you know, with his hand and then come out and put a little on his face and act like he's been in there. He hasn't been soaked. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And um, when you come into the church, if you, if you get a nice soaking of the Holy Ghost, then you, because you become more aware of the presence of God, then you're bothered when you, when you know you've done something wrong. Amen. You're bothered. Amen. And uh, usually, you know, that's the best time to be around a person when they first come in. You know, they, they sound like Zacchaeus. You know, Zacchaeus, if I have taken anything from anyone, I'll restore it fourfold. But after... After a person has been in here for a little while, they start putting if in front of all of their failures. If I talked about you and you know you've been talking and if I have offended you and if I have hurt your feelings and if I didn't do this and if I didn't do that. Praise the Lord. And because there's no no need for me to have to admit that I failed. Praise the Lord. And what I'm really trying to do is protect my conscience. Amen. Instead of just repenting. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm talking good. This is good stuff. This is encouraging. So the question is, what do you do when you fail? What do you do? Do you just uh, lift up the rug and sweep it up under there and keep on going? You know, do you do you use the most most quoted line? 
uh, that I hear in church these days. Nobody's perfect. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, nobody's perfect is not repenting. That's an excuse for your failure. Nobody's perfect. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so I, I would recommend that you be careful about using that kind of terminology. Because it makes the fact that we all fail become more important than dealing with your own personal failure. So how, how do you overcome? How do you overcome? Do you wallow in it? Do you kick yourself and say, I'm a dog, you know, and I'm not saved anymore. Uh, you know, I might as well go on back. Let me start this off before I really jump into this text and relate a story to with you. When I first came into the church, I was so full of zeal. Oh, my goodness. I was I was full of zeal and uh, being full of zeal and so excited about my experience. Um, I shouted all the time and um, it wasn't the kind of shouting that happening a lot now. Now, you know. All uh, Brother Cameron got to do is dun, 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 and then that's enough to shout about because it's music driven. Somebody say music driven. music driven. Yeah, a lot of the shouting now is because the musicians have gotten better. Amen. I know y'all don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. They say, don't, don't, don't hit that note. You hit that note. <laughs> but there was a time, amen, uh, that we got joy when we thought about what he did for us. Amen. Amen. Glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 The excitement of being saved, praise the Lord, was enough to make us go off. And we didn't just go off in church. We went off on the job and school. Praise the Lord in, on the bus. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. I, that's when you find out if you're really excited about being saved, when you're sitting on public transportation and you start thinking about the Lord and you feel a quickening and there ain't no, ain't no church people around you. It's all them sinners and you, oh, glory, thank you, Jesus. Woo. That's when you, <laughs> if you only feel it when you're here, mm. <laughs> praise the Lord. And I'm not telling you not to feel it. Praise the Lord. But, you know, when you've got a soaking. Well, I had a soaking, you know. I had a, I had a soaking. And, but, you know, when you get that soaking, that don't mean you, your conscience is dead. And um, I, I shouted all the time. And one day a brother walked past me. It's about two weeks in the church. And he you know, I shouted every service, in between service, while I was waiting for service, during the prayer service, doing the song service, during the altar call, during the preaching. I am praise the Lord. If I didn't fall on you at least once or twice during church, I didn't have no joy. Praise the Lord. True story, not a parable. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, the brother walked past me. He didn't really say it directly to me. He just said it in passing. And he said, Nobody got all that joy. And when he said that, he stole my joy. He stole it. Because he said, do you really have the Holy Ghost? And I was a new convert. I knew about, uh, at that point, let me see, a week and a half. I knew about one third of one scripture. Because I didn't know nothing. Praise the Lord. And um, I lost my joy. I just lost it. Completely gone. And um, so I left from church that day. I went home. And I didn't feel that joy no more. I didn't feel it. And I had to go to work. So I went to work. And I didn't feel that joy no more. And I got home. And I, oh, I was nervous. I said, oh. I said, I must be a bad person. That even God would leave me. And so I got on my knees and started tearing at home. I was like, thank you, G, thank you, G, thank you, G, thank you, G, thank you. Oh, thank you, G, thank you, G, thank you. I was calling on the Lord, man. I was calling on it. I'm telling you, I was sweating and spitting and spitting and sweating. And the presence of the Lord came nowhere near me. 
And I said, oh, my goodness. Then, then my flesh and the devil came in and said, oh, you done lost what you had already. You're a terrible person. Praise the Lord. So that happened to me on Sunday. Monday, I tarried at home. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I couldn't feel nothing. Well, Saturday, I had already, I woke up Saturday morning. And a couple of those days, I stayed up pretty late calling on the Lord. And uh, I got up Saturday morning. And I said, well, I might as well go to the club tonight. Since the Lord don't want me, I'm going to go find somebody. <laughs> That's what I said. It's a true story, not a parable. I, I, I said, I might as well go on out and have my way. Because uh, since God has given up on me, he didn't even give me a two, good two weeks. He gave up on me already. Praise the Lord. And so uh, I said, I'm going to rest here right now. And then later on in the day, I'll get up, get dressed, and go to the club. Enough of that church stuff. Whatever happened to me must have wore off. And uh, and all he said to me was, can't nobody have that much joy. Is that the real Holy Ghost? That's all he said. And um, I was laying in the bed. It's about noonday on that Saturday. I was laying in the bed. I had the radio. I told you when I first got saved, I had a real problem with music. Praise the Lord. I, well, I loved music. All the worldly music I could get, I loved it. Praise the Lord. See, y'all don't even like talking about what y'all used to like because you still like it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I, I had a radio, and I said I didn't want to fall into temptation. So I took the knob off the radio, turned it on, WYCB, and took the knob off and threw it in the trash. I said I didn't even give my flesh a chance to be going by kiss. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to give myself a chance to go on over by there and listen to that old R&B and, and hip hop. I said, no. So my radio is stuck on 1340 WYCB. And I had it down kind of low, you know. And I'm laying in the bed and praise the Lord. Amen. I'm laying in the bed. I'm I'm planning on going to the club that night because the Lord done came for me. Don't worry, I'm going somewhere with this. And I'm laying in the bed, and all of a sudden I heard a Greater Morning Star come on the radio. I was getting ready to get up and turn the radio off, and then all of a sudden I heard on the radio, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for filling me with the Holy Ghost. It was me <laughs> testifying of receiving the Holy Ghost on the radio. Oh, my goodness. So I jumped. I jumped up out of the bed and the joy came back. I started shouting and speaking in tongues and running around my apartment. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, thank God I was able to overcome. But I couldn't give you a formula at that time. I didn't know nothing. See, all of us at some point fall into some situation that feels maybe literally or figuratively like we failed amen. Amen. and when we get there amen it's easy to wallow it's easy to wallow man failure feels like quicksand uh-huh it feels like quicksand and so i want to give you uh, a couple of points before we get into our text to talk about uh why we fail or sin if you're taking notes and this is going to be important. You're going to refer back to this in your spiritual journey. Okay. Uh, why we fail or sin is found in James 1, 13 through 15. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man with evil. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lusts, and entice. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So why do we fail? Well, we fail because of our own desires. Look at somebody and say, you wanted it. 
I know you you might not want to say that. You know, you might not want to. Oh, I know. See, because you, if you don't want to look at that website, it don't matter how many pop up, you won't go look at it. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you don't want to give a person a piece of your mind, they can say anything they want, and your mind going to stay where it need to be. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, people like, Pastor, I, I fell into fornication. No, you didn't fall into it. You walked into it. I, I've seen people trip and fall a lot of time. I've never seen them fall on the ground and be naked when they hit the ground. <laughs> i never seen that yet. <laughs> Maybe you have, but I've never seen that. I've seen them fall with their clothes and land on the ground with their clothes. Praise the Lord. And somewhere in between falling, the lights went off. The candles got lit. Come on, y'all. Come on. So the, the reason why it happened is because you desired it. Come on, say, I desired it. I desired it. I, see, I, I, I didn't just wake up, you know, and it just happened. You know, I, no, that's not how it happened. See, the Bible really tells us what happens. There is a process. I got, I got tempted first. You know, I got tempted. You know, and after I got tempted, you know, temp tempted, everybody gets tempted. Some, somebody understand that. Everybody gets tempted. Everybody. People like, no, Pastor, you don't understand. No, everybody get tempted. Everybody. Praise the Lord. Now, we don't all get tempted in the same way because some things don't appeal to us. OK, some things, you know, you know, person, I'm just using lust just as an issue. Person said, Pastor, my flesh is out of control. It seemed to me it's, it's under control. I said, why? Because you like medium sized caramel colored women. Praise the Lord. You don't like oversized women. You seem to be passing by all the oversized women. You don't like super thin women. You seem to pass by them, too. How is it that your flesh gets out of your control when it's the ones you like? Come on, you're talking good. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're going down the road, right? You're going down the road. You're in your car. Okay? You try to stop it. You press on the brakes. You got no brakes. That's called out of control. Right? But if your brakes stop when the cops come, your car is not out of control. When your brakes start working, with well, something wrong. So if you got to walk past three thick women to get to the one you like, you drawn away. Did y'all hear me? See? So, oh, Pastor, I, I just, the, the devil made me do it. No, he suggested you do it. And you like the suggestion. You know that's all he did to Eve, right? He suggested to Eve and she suggested to Adam. <laughs> Tell somebody, watch out for the folk that suggest the wrong things to you. Watch out for them. See, because that's how we end up messed up. That's how we fail, because we listen to suggestions. Praise the Lord. Uh-huh. He suggested. That's all. He didn't grab Eve up in the neck and say, get over there and get that tree. He do that? No. no he, he suggested. <laughs> you have God say? Hmm, that, that tree. God doesn't know. Praise the Lord. And the same tactic he used on Eve was the same tactic he tried to use on Jesus. Amen. If thou be, praise the Lord. That's what it is. So, why, why do we fail or sin? Well, because we're drawn away by our own lust and we're enticed. And then when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, see, when, when you start with sin, it feels good. Start feel, oh, it feels good. Sin feels good. Praise the Lord. It feels real good. But when it gets you to the end of the road, that's when it's over. 
Praise the Lord. Because the wages of sin is what? Yeah. All right. So eventually you're going to have to pay. All right. So why we fail, we all know why we fail. Okay. It was no generational curse. Praise the Lord. I know you want to blame it on the generational curse. Praise the Lord. Mm -mm. Blame it on your nature. <laughs> I was born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Now, I got the Holy Ghost, which gives me power over my nature, but I got to reckon that nature to be dead. Well, let me change it. I'm going to change the subject so you can get it, okay? When you're trying to keep a budget, you got to reckon yourself to be broke when you go in the store. You got the credit card, you got the cash in your pocket, but you got to reckon yourself to be broke. Otherwise, you're going to blow your budget. When you're trying to be, when you're trying to lose weight and you go to the buffet, you got to reckon yourself to be full. <laughs> you may not be full, but if you're trying to get slim, I had enough. One plate was enough. Praise the Lord. Now, all that food in there with you, you got to reckon yourself to be full. Isn't that something? See, that reckon works with a whole lot of stuff. It don't just work with one thing. You know, now, guess what? When somebody jumps in your face and you believe you can beat them, you got to reckon yourself to be under control so you don't fight, right? But when you know you can't beat them, you don't have to reckon nothing. You're going to back down. Praise the Lord. You, you don't have to say, I need to, ha, la, 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 la. no, you don't. You don't have to do none of that. You're going to say, no fight today. Look, can we talk about this? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, Amen. I know what I'm talking about. So we know why we fail now, right? Yes. So let's, uh, now see, my, see, I didn't have good parents. So what? What that got to do with anything? I was, <laughs> I was raised by wolves. So what? <laughs> So what? The wolves didn't tell you have four children. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know what I'm talking about. Yes, uh-huh. You know, if we didn't think this was wrong. Well, you know it's wrong now. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Well, my mother was an alcoholic. Okay. Does that mean you have to be one? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. The reason why you drinking it, because you like it. Yes. Praise the Lord. So you like this. Oh, I just hate this stuff. Mm. I hate it. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. That's not how it works. I know what I'm talking about. So the reason why we fail is what? We drawn away because of our own lust. If we can learn to be honest about that, the rest of it is going to be easy. The rest of it is going to be easy if we learn how to be honest about that. Unfortunately, we don't like to be honest about that. We have an opinion about ourselves that's a lie. I wouldn't do that. Says who? You? That means you're an expert at lying to yourself. Okay, so well let's let's get to the next point. Here comes the second point. When and if we sin or fall, what should we do? What what should I do about that? Cuz cuz I'm going to do it. I'm going to fail. Now I've been in the church 36 years. Praise the Lord. And I, there's some things I can just boldly stand up and say I have never done since I've been saved. I can shout, praise the Lord. Hey. But then there's other things I can't do that. I can't do that. Now, some of the things I have not done, people might consider those the big things. Wow, he's never done that big thing. But in God's sight, all unrighteousness is sin. And the moment I start measuring sin based upon what I think is important to God, I got a problem. 
First John, the, f- the first chapter, first John, the first chapter, verses four through ten. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Why is he writing it? So you can stay happy. So you can stay happy. That's what this is about. Keeping you happy. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So that means we got to make sure that our lifestyle is a lifestyle of light. Okay. So let's see a little bit more. But if we walk in the light as he is in, in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. So this is a constant cleansing. Now, you know something? If you took a bath in January 2023. Hallelujah. 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 That's wonderful. But if you think you didn't, you haven't smelled since then. (laughs) You're confused. That bath was good and it was needed. Praise the Lord. But guess what? You're not going to stay clean on the basis of the bath 11 months ago. You have to. (laughs) You have to continuously wash. Praise the Lord. Am I telling the truth? One bath is not enough, right? Uh Uh-oh, some of y'all said, I hope it was. (laughs) One bath is not enough. Why is one bath not enough? Because just by the process of your skin dying, that dead skin is dirty. You said, well, but see, I haven't played in any dirt. You're made of dirt. Oh, I just said something right there. You're made, you're made of dirt. And just like you're made of dirt, you were born in sin. And if you're made of dirt and born in sin, just like you're going to get dirty without doing anything, it don't take nothing for you to sin. Praise the Lord. Oh, my conscience is clear. That's because you're ignoring your sin. That's all that is. Praise the Lord. Just like that person that's smelling is ignoring that smell. You know, you can, you can get so comfortable with your own smell that you don't smell it no more. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, y'all know I'm telling the truth. And everybody around you be like, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> and the person that's smelling talk about, who is that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know I'm telling the truth. And you can get just like that. Everybody trying to throw a little innuendo. Somebody lying. <laughs> and the liar saying, mm-hmm, somebody is. Lying while they're lying. Praise the Lord. So, that one bath you took was wonderful. I took a blood bath 36 years ago. Amen. Glory. But I got to keep on taking a bath. I got to keep on being cleansed. Let's see what it says now. He says in verse 8, if we say we have no sin. Now that's that's a present tense. (laughs) He didn't say had no sin. He said have. That means there's some more in there. Praise the Lord. There's some more in there. This stuff right here, it just loves to. It craves it. It desires it. Praise the Lord. So he said, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Ooh, we, man, we deceive ourselves. That's a pretty rough one right there. Deceive ourselves. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You know, they had the little Snow White mirror, mirror on the wall. You know, you're looking in the mirror. You can't seem to see something. Praise the Lord. Then then maybe you need to tell somebody else to check you out. Praise the Lord. And you make sure you get somebody that's honest and not concerned 
that they're going to lose your friendship by telling you the truth. Praise the Lord. He said, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Then what should we do when we fail? Because we're going to fail. He says, if we confess, somebody say confess. confess. Man, that's a hard one. That means in order to confess, you have to admit some guilt. You know, you go to jail and you go before the parole board and they, they, they give you 25 to 40 years. That means you can come to the parole board after 25 years. And you get in front of them after 20, 25 hard years in jail. And they, they, they say, uh, Mr. Lowe, uh, you're here today. Do you understand why you have been in prison? <laughs> and he says, the white man. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Going back to your cell. <laughs> Going back to your cell. <laughs> because we have the videotape of you committing the crime. And though you may have been hurt by somebody, uh, the one with the mask on and the gun, that was you. So there has to be a place where you're willing to confess your guilt. Amen. Ooh, that's a rough one, right? Confess your guilt. And someone said, well, I need, do I need to go to Father Mahoney? Uh, no. No, you don't. In most cases, you can talk right to the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. In most cases, not all cases, but in most cases, you can go right to the Lord. Praise the Lord. But there has to be an honesty there to admit what was done. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you something? You know why so many relationships are broken and not restored? You want to know why? Anybody want to know why? It's not because people are not claiming they're not repenting. Because mm -mm. they're not confessing. Amen. Ooh. Yeah. So the person is looking to clear the air about the issue. Yeah. And they can't clear the air because the person who violated them refuses to admit that they violated them. Amen. So they go... I want to get back in, you know, I, I want things to be the way they used to. They can't be that way as long as you won't admit you're wrong. Come on. Well, I made some bad choices. Oh, you better believe you made some bad choices. But that's not what we're here to discuss. We're here to discuss a choice. Amen. Oh, y'all don't believe me. Turn to Luke 17 chapter. Let's, let's go to Luke the 17 chapter. Y'all looking at me like, oh, no, you just had to, you know, just forgive them. You just had to forgive them, Pastor, you know, because they don't have to admit to anything. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go to Luke, the 17th chapter. Luke, the 17th chapter. Y'all almost there? Luke, the 17th chapter. Let's start at verse number one. You have it. Say amen. All right. Then he said unto his disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. What did it say? Will they come? They will come. He said, but woe unto him to whom they come. It were better for him that he had a mill, for him that a millstone hanged around his neck, about his neck, and cast into the sea that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, what should you do? Come on. What does it say there? Come on, say it out loud. Rebuke him. Rebuke him. Don't just forgive him. Let him know you did something. You did something. Now watch, watch what it says next. Come on, read the next part out to me loud and clear for me, please. If he Wait a minute, what's the first word? No, that's not the first word there. And, and if 
he repents. That's conditional. But what if he don't repent? See? You see what the problem is? A lot of us want to move on. See, we want to move on because we don't want to deal with the fact that we're a low-down, dirty rat dog. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, let's go back to our text. I just thought I'd show you that in the Bible in case you didn't know that was in there. All right? So there is a responsibility on the part of the violator to confess. And when what was done was done to a person, if it lieth in thy power to confess to that person that I did it to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> I know I'm talking good. Y'all don't want to hear this, but I know I'm talking good right now. All right. So you confess. <clears throat> That's what it says, right? Confess. Man, that's kind of deep, isn't it? If we confess them, back at 1 John, if we confess our sin, sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Man, so when I fail, there's some things I need to do. I can't just move on. Amen. I can't just bat, pass by it. I can't just say the blood still works. No, you know, you can get in the bath without soap. <laughs> you can soften up the dirt, but it ain't gone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, man, you know, how, you know how that works. You get in there and without any soap. Praise the Lord, and you you didn't you didn't get rid of the dirt. It just rolled around now, it's moving on your leg and your arm and your back. <laughs> but it's still there. <laughs> it's still there. And if any of it come off, it's just in the bath with you. Praise the Lord. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. So, when and if we fail or sin, there's some things we have to do. So let's learn. Let's learn something. Let's learn to be honest. Somebody say, be honest, be honest. About, our about our failures. We got to learn to be honest Amen. about our failures. Amen. So what I'm teaching on tonight is how to overcome failures. You got to be honest about your failures. See, you know, you see it making me feel guilty to have to think about it. Well, you was enjoying it while you was doing it. Amen. Why you feel guilty about it now? You know? When you were spending the money you stole, you felt good. I don't want to think about the fact that I'm a thief. But you was loving thinking about the fact you was enriched. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't want to think that I'm a, I'm a woman beater. Yeah, okay. So, so what you want to think about? Because that woman with the knots upside her head. And the bruises on her face. She's thinking about the fact that you're a woman beater. And as long as you're in denial that you beat her. She, she just ran into my fist. I wasn't trying to punch her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Got to confess. Look at somebody say you got to confess. Yeah, you got to confess. And when somebody is the victim of your, your sin or your failure, you got to confess to them. Praise the Lord. See, we don't like that. You know, some of us, somebody talk about us, we want to go track them down. Praise the Lord. When we talk about somebody, we hide. Praise. I know what I'm talking about. I know just what I'm talking about. So let's look at, let's look at the story. The Psalms 51. Psalms 51. And I haven't touched our text yet. Don't worry. I'm going to get back to 2 Samuel 24. I haven't forgotten. I'm probably not going to be able to get to where I want to get this year. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, this year, because, you know, this is we're coming to the end of the year. Psalms 51. Let, let me give you the background of this story. A very rich and powerful man took advantage of a lowly woman. That's what some of y'all would like to believe. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. That's what some of y'all would like to believe. The story is David and Bathsheba. See, because he, you know, was the king and she was just Bathsheba. But there is, just for your, just for your information's sake, there is no inkling in the scripture of her resisting him or trying to warn her husband at all, which makes her complicit with the actions. Okay? There's not one inkling of evidence in the Bible that Bathsheba tried to warn her husband <laughs> after she got with David and she was complicit in wanting to sleep with her husband. Oh, I... <laughs> Some of y'all so pro-woman, you're not even biblical. Praise the Lord. Now, there's plenty of dogs in the Bible who are men. Plenty of them. But this story don't make her innocent. Because when God's judgment came down, it came down on both of them. Praise the Lord. And I believe God is fair. I believe God is fair. I just believe it. It's hard for me to believe anything other than because he's just so fair. Matter of fact, he's fair to his disadvantage sometimes to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's look at the, this is the background. The background is uh, David has gotten with uh, Bathsheba, impregnated her, tried to use her to deceive her husband so he would think he was the father of the child. I guess Maury didn't have no three generational cousins back then. <laughs> You're not the baby. <laughs> You're not the father. <laughs> so, so, my, your hair is a little curly and reddish. <laughs> I'm telling you, and she was going with it too. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, he, he had more integrity than the king had. Praise the Lord and his wife. Praise the Lord. Because he slept at the door and she didn't open the door and say, honey, watch your back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm talking good, man. I'm telling you, man. You know, can, can I harp on that just for a moment? See? No, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to distract you. <laughs> I don't want to even distract y'all tonight. But the Bible tells us the prophet came to him and spoke to him. It was, uh, you know, Nathan the prophet. And he couldn't just come out and tell him, you low down cheating rat. He couldn't, you know, he couldn't go on social media and throw shade. <laughs> he couldn't do any of that. So he said, I have to tell him a parable. A parable about sheep. Said there's a rich guy who has all these sheep. And then there's a poor person with one little ewe lamb. And and David, oh my goodness, he scripture said he was enraged. He was so angry, he said, This man shall surely die. And it's easy for us to get enraged when we look at something somebody else is doing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But when it's us, I think you have the wrong impression about me. <laughs> really? Do tell. <laughs> You've done that over and over, and it's somehow my impression is wrong. But he, he was enraged. This man shall surely die. And the prophet said to him, thou art the man. When he said that, before he finished his conversation, he reminded him of how far God had brought him from. Amen. Told him where he found him. Say he gave you your master's throne. And then on the back end, this is this is this is for you preachers. On the back end. And he said, if that had not been enough, he would have given thee such and such. Oh, man, that's profound. 
If it's not enough, just name your price. Just name your price. And then David, now, because he, he realizes he's blown it. He realizes. And then God says, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, <laughs> the scepter is not going to pass, depart from your house, but your house is going to be bloody for many generations. And then he looks at Bathsheba and said, that child going to die. So much for her innocence. Interesting. Well, Psalms 51 is David's commentary about what happened. All right, y'all got it? So here's David's confession. Y'all want to hear his confession? Verse 1, it was a generational curse. Y'all don't see that, right? I grew up in a poor neighborhood. I was weak that day. Because those are, those are all the things we say. I needed love. <laughs> he made me angry. She made me angry. That's not what David does. How to overcome failure. He says, have mercy upon me, O oh God. See, you got to acknowledge you. Yeah. I keep saying it. If you're going to overcome, you can't be sitting back saying, see, see my cousin, my second cousin on, the, on, on my grandmother's side. <laughs> you got to <laughs> acknowledge you. <laughs> have mercy upon me. Well, why am I asking for mercy? Because I know who I am. I know who I am. According to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out whose transgressions? My transgressions. Deal with minds. See, deal with minds. See, you know, I saw, I saw, uh, Something on social media where the, the woman says to the man, we're having a baby. And some of you may have seen it. And, um, and he said, that's funny. Um, I'm sterile. He said, you know, he had surgery so he would be sterile. So then she, then she said, so when was you going to tell me that you had surgery? Did y'all get it yet? She wanted the conversation to be about his surgery and not her pregnancy. See, when you don't want to talk about the real issue, that's because you're not ready to admit to what you've done. See, without his surgery, he would have been deceived. His surgery actually saved him from the deception of years of child support. Come on, somebody. He said, well, we want to talk about this baby. She said, no, we want to talk about this surgery. <laughs> so he said, talk about the surgery outside the door. See, that's where we, we run into the problems. We always come prepared to argue for our point instead of admitting our wrong. Amen. Now, there could be a lot of excuses for why we did what we did. Amen. There could be a lot of, and those excuses may seem genuine to us. Okay, they may be, they may feel genuine to us, but they are excuses. So here's what we have to do. Get rid of excuses when it comes to God. Amen. Amen. So let's look at this now. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. Who is he focusing on? Myself. How to overcome failure. Focus on what 
you have done. I, I just can't bear to look at it. Well, while you was doing, you was gloating. Woo, got that money. Yeah, yeah. Woo, that stuff. Well, woo, I was fired up. Woo. You was boasting while you was enjoying it. Yeah, my body count just went up. <laughs> Come on now, you was rejoicing when you were doing it. Now you can't bear to look at it because you can't look at it in the positive. You got to look at it for what it is. Yeah. You, you see what happens? Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's look at it now. Let's, let's see now. And I know I'm moving slow. But I haven't gotten to my text yet because by the time I get there, you'll know it. All right. He says, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. Cleanse me from Whose sin? My, My sin. sin. My sin. Now, the Bible don't tell us about Bathsheba. Because, <laughs> because it wasn't writing about her story. It was writing about David's side. Okay. Just like we don't hear no more commentary about Eve. Praise the Lord. But I know you ladies would love to get your neck, hands around Eve's neck. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Curse be Eve. She left a lot of baggage behind. Praise the Lord. She left a lot of baggage behind. Mm -hmm. So let's look. He said, cleanse me from my sin. Man, I got to get with my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression. I acknowledge it. See, confession is acknowledging what you did wrong. Not what somebody else did wrong. Praise the Lord. And my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Man, I realized God saw me do it. And he knows the real reason I did it. See, he knows the real reason. I told you that story about that woman that went to the weight loss clinic. And she was losing weight every week at the clinic. Then they sent her home. And the first week she came back, she gained two and a half pounds. She sat in the office and cried, told the doctor, I don't understand what's going on. I got gland problems. <laughs> went home for another week, came back two and a half pounds heavy. He said, you sure you're not eating nothing extra? No, I swear on my grandmother's grave. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, you sure? You sure you want to say that? Are oh, you calling me a liar? You going to swear on grandma? Now you going to question whether or not I'm calling you a liar? He said, would you have a seat? She said, sure. Pull out the videotape, put the videotape, and there she was. At least her twin going into the refrigerator getting food. <laughs> All she had to say was the reason I gained weight is because I've been eating more than I was eating at the farm. See, that's the thing. You already ate the meal. You might as well go ahead and admit you ate it. Amen. You already did the do. Praise the Lord. You already smoked the joint. You already drank the drugs. You already cussed them out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You might as well. Yes, yes, I did it. Yes, I, I let my flesh get the best of me. I did it. See, and then you can move forward. But as long as you're sitting there and say, I don't know what came over me. Sure you do. You. <laughs> Let's see now. Let's see. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. The only way you're going to be able to accept what God does is when you admit what you have done. Amen. See, sometimes we get angry with people instead of getting angry with ourselves. The Lord. One time a person said to me, they said, Pastor, uh, I want you to uh, use me in this area. And I said, be faithful. Who can tell what happened? 
And uh, the person wasn't faithful. Mm-mm. They're not here, so you don't have to look for them. <laughs> Y'all look. Which way is past the look? <laughs> well, they wasn't faithful. And after they got tired of being unfaithful and not elevated, they left. And this is what they said when they left. He trying to hold me down. Amen. You're not being honest. That's right. See, you can't get nowhere not being honest. Amen. So they left from here and they went to another church. You know, he was over there at that church. And the leader over that church called over and said, how's the, you know, what kind of person this is? I said, well, they needed a fresh start. I'm not going to dog you. Because guess what? The dog is with you already. <laughs> woof, woof. He's coming out with you. If you a liar, you didn't just lie here. You're going to lie where you go next. If you a whole monger, you ain't just a whole monger here. You're going to be a whole monger over there. If you a tithe stealer here, you stealing tithes over there too. You ain't going to get over there and say, you know something? I think I'm going to change now. So I'm not going to send a bad report with you, not unless you did something that was illegal. Right. You touching children, I'm sending a report. Right. <laughs> so the police will get the first one, and then the church will get the second one. Yeah. Praise the Lord, some things you got to send a report. Right. Amen. But you're a man of God, <laughs> you're supposed to be the saint. Amen. Praise the Lord. So they said, well, I said, they just need a first start. Maybe you'll be able to help them. I wasn't able to help them. Maybe you can help them. About three months went by. They called me up again and said, you should have told me. <laughs> I said, tell you what? What are you talking about? Because you can't outrun you. You know that, right? You know you can't outrun you? <laughs> Yeah, you can't outrun you. I know you think you can. You think you're fast, but you're not that fast. <laughs> you cannot outrun you. So you might as well come clean. Praise the Lord. If you can't have an honest conversation to your ways, concerning your ways with the Lord, you're in trouble already. Be honest. You may never come in the office and say, Pastor, I'm a dirty rat. And I may say, yeah, I know. <laughs> but you may never come in and say that. But you better say it to the Lord. Because he already knows what you are. Amen. Praise the Lord. So remember, we're dealing with how to overcome failure, right? Because here's David. You think David's failure was pretty bad, right? Now, let me, let me suggest something for y'all to think about, especially my theologians. See, Saul was rejected because he listened to the people. Amen? Amen. Amen? He was disobedient to God listening to the people. But Saul didn't do all the junk David did. Sometimes what you think is bad is not as bad as you think it is. And sometimes the people God put in your face is not as good as you think they are. Amen. God's goodness is just keeping them in that place. <laughs> well, the reason, see, the reason they're in that position is they're highly anointed and favored of God and perfectly. Yeah, okay. Keep on telling yourself that. The man after God's own heart was a murderer. An adult, boy, I could go down his, his rap sheet. His rap sheet is pretty bad. And the guy he replaced, he wasn't better than the guy he replaced. He was just the guy God chose. So God didn't pick us because we were so good. He picked us because he's so good. <laughs> oh, I'm talking good right now. Some of y'all going to get that when you get, when you get to your failure again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So he said, look, that thou mightest be justified, verse 4, when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. So when I get what I get, I'll know why I got it. Praise the Lord. I know why I got it. I won't be, oh, 
God is unfair. No, you know exactly why you got it, because you know exactly who you are, because you admit it to what you did. You'll admit to it. So let's look. Let's go a little further with this. We run out of time at night, but we're going to we're going to pick this back up because this is how to overcome your failure. So he says, behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Yes, I was born like this. I was born like this. But you still want me to be honest. Mm-hmm. You want me to be honest inside, right. not with a mask. Inside, right. praise the Lord. How, how to overcome failure? You can't. Oh, nah. I'm a hopeless little leaf blowing in the wind. <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> Just cut it out. You ain't no hopeless little leaf blowing in no wind. Use a windstorm. <laughs> So just be honest with yourself. Use a lot of trouble. Use a whole piece of work. I don't understand why we don't click. Because <laughs> you clack, that's why. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Be honest. Be honest. That's how you overcome. Because guess what? You're never going to outrun you. Amen. You're never going to outrun you. Oh, see, that's how I've been in church. 68, <laughs> 68 years past, I learned how to be holy. No, you haven't. Mm -mm. No, you're going to yield to the Holy Ghost because you're going to have to be led all the way. And do you know what you used to like? You still like it. You still like it. I know you, you try to play like you don't like it. You try to act like you don't. You try to peep out the side of your eye. <laughs> Like you don't see it. <laughs> but you still like it. Praise the Lord. Because if you didn't like it, you couldn't be drawn away. That's right. That's right. Don't tell me you don't like nothing. <laughs> you don't like, I don't like nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Praise the Lord. You got married at 13. I don't want even want a man. Why you get married at 13? Because the church required it. No, they didn't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Got 13 children. I didn't want no children. Yeah, I know you didn't want no children. You wanted the action to make children. Praise the Lord. But I'm done with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure you are. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I got I gotta stop for the day. You you know David was an old man. You know they had to test him to make sure he was really dying. Do you know what they tested him with? His weakness. They tested the old David with his weakness. They put two young virgins in the bed with him. And when David didn't reach for him, they said, he dying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All they got to do is put what you like next to you. And if you don't reach for you dying. You dying now, Jack. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord, y'all. No, no, Pastor, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the hope. That sounds wonderful. Keep telling yourself that because you know you. Praise the Lord. If that's what makes you feel like you're all right, instead of just admitting, I have some issues. I'm working on them. I'm asking the Lord to create in me a clean heart. Praise the Lord. So he says, look, behold, I was shaping in iniquity and sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. What is that? That means even Though you overcome failure, you do not bypass judgment. Amen. Amen. He said, what are you talking about, Pastor? Because whom the Lord loveth, what does he do? Can I give y'all the New York translation of that? Whom the Lord loveth, he whips your behind. 
When I was a kid, my mother, she would say, go in that room, boy, because I'm coming in. <laughs> and I coming in there, I'm going to whip your behind. And I knew it was coming, so I started crying in advance. I wasn't going to wait for the battle. I was going to shout. I, I said, I'm going to put up the biggest ruckus I can to convince her that I'm already wounded. <laughs> so I started, oh, oh, oh. And then I heard, heard the steps coming towards the room. Oh. <laughs> and before she could touch me, I fall on the floor. And everything she touched, I said, you broke it. You broke my arm. You broke my leg. Oh, you knocked my eye out. I was exaggerating because I didn't want to deal with correction. And many of us do the same stuff in the church. We exaggerate. This church hurt. We exaggerate. Now, we didn't exaggerate when we was enjoying that sin. We exaggerate when we was telling people off. Praise the Lord. We was on, on social media f flossing and flashing and dripping with, with, with the stolen tithe <laughs> goods. <laughs> you done stole God's tithe and you flossing with it. Talk about this is how we do it. <laughs> Come on now. I know what I'm talking about. So, first part of this lesson, how to overcome failure. Praise the Lord. How to overcome failure. First thing, no. Let me give you a point. The reason why we fail is what? Anybody remember? Drawn away by our own lust. Number two, when and if we fail, we've got to be careful that we don't deceive ourselves. Okay, confess, admit to, praise the Lord, admit to. Now, I, I'm, I'm closing today. And, of course, the last one is learn to be honest about your failure. Learn to be honest. Because maybe you might be able to help somebody else. So when they look at you and see six children and no man, don't say it's a miracle. Because they don't know. They just walked into the door. They don't know. So if you're going to help them, just say, don't do what I did. Because this has been real hard. That's what you do. You don't have to tell them all your business. Just say, listen. I see you looking at Brother Calhoun over there. And he's looking right, Scooby Delicious. But leave him alone. He already got three children and no woman. Do you want to be the fourth baby mama? Be honest. Be honest. Praise the Lord. When they come and say, can you loan me some money? Then say, are you paying your tithes? Because you know the Bible said if you don't, you curse with a curse. Really? Yeah. You got you to help people out. Be honest. And then tell them, now, I, I, I've been a stick-up kid. <laughs> I've been a stick-up kid before. Praise the Lord. And, and God put holes in my pockets. Tell, just be honest with them. Don't, don't be playing around with it. Be honest with them. You can help them out. Praise the Lord. Be honest when you fail. I didn't make the right choice, and it set me back. So when they say, how long have you been in church? And they say, well, you know, my, my mother and father, you know, they, they, were, they were in church when I was born. And I got the Holy Ghost at 8. Now I'm 23. So why aren't you doing anything in church? Don't go, mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't do that. Just be honest and say, I haven't lived the way I should have lived. 
So it's got me set back. Instead of me being in the front, I'm in the back of the line because I chose not to take all that I learned. Amen. Just be honest. Be honest. Because now you can use your failure to help somebody else. See, that's what David did in Psalm 51. He used his failure to help us. Praise the Lord. Listen, if you're watching this tonight, this is about what is going to happen. If it hasn't happened to you yet, don't worry. It's going to happen. If you've been around here 53 seconds, you know, it don't take long to fail. It don't take long to fail. All you need is a moment, a moment of yielding to you. That's all, a moment. And guess who is your greatest fan? You are. And guess who is your greatest client? You are. So it don't take long to fail. But you know what I'm so glad about? That when we fail, there's a way for us to get back. Thank you, Jesus. There's a way to get back. There's a way. We just got to be honest about it. We got to be honest. And when we get back into this lesson, we're going to really look at what David did. Because sometimes your failure comes with collateral damage. It comes with collateral damage, man. Sometimes your failure, man, it, it costs not you, but it can cost your children. It can cost your wife. It can cost the people that you're governing to end up suffering hurt and lack. If you could just learn, I got to be honest with God. Listen, I want to be honest with you. If I had the key to heaven, I'd let everybody in. If I had the key. But I'm also going to be honest to tell you, it wouldn't be heaven if I let everybody in. Because the same thing we got here, right here on the earth would be there. You say, no, 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 it, that couldn't happen in heaven. No, I want to be honest with you. It's already happened. There was an angel that was right in heaven who chose to rebel and disobey God. And God had to put him out of heaven. And if God will put a created perfect being out of heaven when he fails, don't you understand how crucial it is for us to address our failures to get there? Listen. If you're not born again of the water and spirit, you haven't been baptized in water in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, then you're not ready for heaven. He said, well, who are you to tell me that? I'm being honest. Now, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. But I'm a good person. Well, you're not being honest. You're not being honest because if you're being honest, you would understand that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I want to challenge you. If you're watching this stream, how to overcome your failures, go to that chat line and say, I need somebody to talk to. I need somebody to tell me what I need to do about my sins. I need to set up a time so I can get baptized. I need a church home. I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Just be honest. Let's be honest. You're not going to overcome by your own power. It's going to take God to help us. Let me pray for you. Again, Father, I thank you. Oh, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We want to overcome failures. In the name of Jesus. It's by your power that we walk in victory. I ask you, Lord, 
Help us. Help us. Help us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you want to be a blessing to this ministry, you can. The way you will do that is by giving via our cash app, which is dollar sign infam intl. Dollar sign infam intl. Or you can go to our website, infamily, the letter N, family.org. You can go give via PayPal. If you're in the sanctuary and you want to give electronically, you can go through those doors at this time and you'll be able to give to your heart's content.